All right, so that's not exaggerated by the way. So in this box, we have brand new gear. This for us is gonna change how we do things. So this isn't just a normal unboxing video and it's very expensive equipment in here. This will be our most expensive gear that we own minus our red camera. So first things you need to know, if you haven't watched our main video release, our best of video, at the end of that video, we went over kind of what our plan is moving forward with changing how we do things on our main channel and even our behind the scenes channel. Now to do more narrative stuff, we have to change the way we're filming a lot of the stuff. We're definitely not giving up our style, but we're definitely wanting to evolve that style. So here we go, let's get started. So in this box, we have some brand new camera lenses. Now we've been using Canon lenses for a very long time. And now that we're doing more narrative stuff and more kind of traditional storytelling, we are changing things up a little bit or a lot and we're getting cinema lenses. So that's what I have in this box. When we were purchasing these lenses specifically because they are expensive, we spent probably three to four months researching different lenses to see the different options. Now Sigma lenses, they're one of the cheapest lenses out there for cinema cameras. This set right here was $25,000, $26,000. Now I'm sharing that with you just so you kind of get an idea. This isn't YouTube money, this is um, working with brands. So because we work with sponsors, we take that money and we invest it back into what we love to do, into filmmaking. Now I know this isn't exciting guys, but you're experiencing it with me. Now Sigma, they have a lot of different lenses. We bought the bigger lens kit. They have two lens kits, at least that I noticed at the time. The one that we went with covers 14 millimeter all the way to 135 millimeter. Usually if you want the best picture or best image possible, you're not buying a zoom lens. Now the reason for that is zoom lenses, you can't film at low light is good and also you have more glass. So generally speaking, the picture's not gonna be as clear. You have a bunch more glasses going through, so you're actually lo losing light and image quality. So keep that in mind. Let me reveal, and this is my first time opening it too, by the way. Aren't they just pure sexiness? At its finest. So you're gonna see right here, we, we bought it with the case. We bought the whole set from B&H. Um, covering 14. I actually wrote it down just so I make sure I told you the correct stuff. But we got a 14, 20, 24, 35, 50, 85, and 135 millimeter. Let me just pull out the 85 millimeter lens. Now, one thing to be aware of, and I didn't know this until I went to film school, and you should always carry expensive lenses with two hands, but you're gonna notice right here it says T1.5. Most people that are doing photography or shooting on a DSLR, they're not gonna have a lens that has a T-stop. It's gonna have an F-stop. T-stop is an exact measurement of light. An F-stop is a close estimate of the light. Now, the reason why a T-stop is so important with film, um, especially in the earlier days when they were filming with actual film, is they had to know exactly how much light was being let in to hit the actual film or the sensor now, in this case, where most things are digital. So the T-stop, you're filming with a lot of expensive movie actors, uh, movie sets, so you couldn't guess and have a close estimate, it had to be exact. So that's one of the reasons why cinema lenses are more expensive, in a lot of cases much more expensive, is because of this T-stop is an exact measurement, so they made sure these lenses were perfect as far as the readings that they are giving you. So right here you'll see T1.5, and all these lenses are at a T-stop of 1.5. Now, if you're not familiar with Aperture and how that works, I'll have a link down below in the description. Watch our Aperture video that we did kind of covering that on F-stops. But F-stops and T-stops, they're very similar. If it's a 1.5 T-stop, it's gonna be very similar to 1.5 F-stop. However, a T-stop's gonna be even that much more accurate. So keep that in mind. When you're buying any lens with a DSLR, you're more than likely not gonna see a T-stop lens. So this is the T-stop. 1.5, because that's how wide they can open up. And let me actually show you right here. Can you see how that, that's the T-stop? Or for most people, it's similar to an F-stop, same principle. And let me show you this side of the lens. So you can see you manually are opening it up instead of with most DSLR cameras, you're digitally doing the exact same effect. Once we put this on a camera, you're gonna have a first AC. 
assistant camera person. When you're filming narratives and someone's walking towards the camera, the focus is gonna change. Um, to get that the best it can be, you need to be doing that manually. You have to be doing that manually with cinema lenses, with most cinema lenses. So you're gonna see right here, this tells you, this line right here, it tells you what's in focus. So two feet, 10 inches, um, everything is gonna be in focus that's at two feet and 10 inches. And at three feet, if I have this set at three feet, everything at three feet is gonna be in focus. So I'm sure you can do the math. And it goes all the way to infinity. So that means everything in infinity is gonna be in focus. So this is important for a first AC who's pulling focus. So they'll take measurements with an actual tape measure. So they'll, they'll measure the actor from the camera. It'll be 10 feet. What they'll do is they'll set the mark here for 10 feet so they know that the actor is in focus. So they're getting exact measurements. They're not having to guess. Right here, you're gonna see one, two, three, four, five, five lenses. And then in here, they also have these brackets to actually, in case, because the lenses a lot of times um, are very heavy. And if you're hooking this into a red camera, sometimes it's gonna be almost too much weight. So you'll have these where you can put these on and then you can actually hook these to a rail system so the camera body itself with the, the mount doesn't have to take in all the weight. Now, they do make these lenses in several different mounts. Um, for example, if I try and put this on a Canon DSLR camera, it's not gonna go on because it doesn't have a Canon mount, it has a PL mount which has these four different notches right here, and that's the easiest way to tell just from looking at it. Now, PL mount, the red can take multiple different mounts. You can actually install like a Canon mount, PL mount. Um, PL mounts are more traditional for most cinema cameras, so that's why we decided to go with a PL mount over a Canon mount. Um, but we do have to switch those out depending on what shoot we're doing. If we're shooting with Canon lenses, we have to put a Canon mount on those. Whenever you're on a movie set or a non-movie set, you never just shut the case and leave it unlocked because what happens is if someone's trying to run and hurry to, to grab the cases, they won't remember or they won't register that this case is actually open. They'll grab the case, lift it up, this will open and all the ones will fall out and you'll lose your job and you'll lose a lot of expensive equipment. So the rule of thumbs, you don't have to shut every one of these. I'll usually, if I'm on set, I'll shut one of them no matter what. In case someone comes and, and grabs it, it's not gonna open up. But if you wanna be super professional, you can close all of them. But if you're opening it constantly and closing it, that can be kind of a hassle. So that's why I at least shut one of those. For us, we do a lot of stuff with a wide angle lens. So it was worth waiting three, four months to get the lenses and get the exact lenses we wanted because you're forking out the dough. Now let me go ahead and pull this one out. And it's in another Sigma and Right here, it shows the exact focal lengths that are in here. It's the 14 and the 135. Now this right here for these lenses, these are at a T2. So once again, they have a harder time pulling off with wide angle lenses, um, wider open um, T stops. So that's why these are a T2 compared to the 1.5. And it's the same thing for telephoto lenses as well because they're going through a lot more glass. Most cases, you're losing a lot of the light. So they're usually not as wide open as the other lenses. Before buying this set, I was actually hoping that they'd all come in the same case, but sadly not in this case. So the disadvantage of this is now I have to bring two cases on set. And I'm assuming you're gonna find the exact same kind of layout once I open this case. And what's cool is it says Sigma right here. We have a lot of different Pelican cases, so we can look directly on the actual case and see what we are bringing and it's the exact same layout right here. So all seven of these lenses are built for a full frame camera. So our new camera that we are about to get in that we just had to upgrade the sensor, we had a super 35 millimeter sensor on our red AK camera. We just sent one of our reds in to get upgraded and we're gonna get it back as a VistaVision sensor, which is much bigger, um, the sensor itself, than a super 35 millimeter sensor. So if you put these lenses on that sensor, on the VistaVision sensor, we're not gonna see any cropping or vignetting going on in theory at least so we'll find out soon so over the next months once we start shooting with these lenses we're going to start showing you guys um, comparisons from the canon lenses to these one thing to know up front the biggest difference for us with with switching over cinema lenses is now we can pull focus manually because when we're on a red camera with a glide camera or steady cam and, and walking in we can't pull focus with our hands we have to do it by hooking a bunch of fall focus contraptions and a, a full rig to that setup with this because of the 
these little notches right here, we can now actually pull focus. And that's something the DP or the cinematographer who's actually filming isn't doing, that's what the first assistant cameraman person is doing. These lenses are great lenses, but most Hollywood movies aren't filming with Sigma lenses, the truth of the matter. Cordura Digital did a recent project recently and I thought it turned out amazing. I'll have a link down below in the description. They shot those all on Sigma lenses. Um, I know that because I asked them directly because I saw it on their Instagram story and I reached out to them and they said they absolutely love the lenses, um, especially for YouTube. We ordered some other PL lenses and those PL lenses that we ordered are the Leica Summa Lux. Now, once again, this goes with a ton of research. What I noticed with the Sumalux lenses is a lot of big productions are using them because of the quality um, and the image quality as well. Now, those lenses are even much more expensive than these lenses. To put that in perspective, one of those Sumalux like lenses is more expensive than all seven of these lenses. So it's definitely a, a big price jump. And because of how expensive they are, we didn't buy as many of those lenses. Also, those lenses are such high demand right now that there's a back order of at least six months so we won't even get those potentially until July August September I'll have a link down below as well to show you kind of what movies have been filmed with that but those are an industry standard in the Hollywood world Beauty and the Beast was filmed with those if you've seen Stranger Things season one and season two those are shot on Sumo Lux the new Justice League movie that was also filmed with those lenses so they're incredible lenses um, incredible quality and those are set or made for super 35 millimeter. So those aren't even meant to handle this division. But if we're shooting with our super 35 sensor, and once again, this gets a little complicated, it's gonna handle it just fine. So that, I, I wanted to mention those Leica lenses because for us, we're gonna have two sets of lenses. Um, we have two reds, a lot of times we're breaking up into two different teams. So depending on who's shooting what, and um, for the bigger, the bigger productions, where we have a full on team, um, camera assistant, first AC, the Sumo Lux lenses are gonna be like our A team, and then these will be plan B, and then our Canon lenses will kind of be for our behind the scenes channel. That was a lot of information at once, um, but we wanted to kind of share what was going on. And once again, all this is made possible because of the opportunities we've had to work with brands. We take that money and we go and we use that to invest right back into what we're passionate about. And the goal this year is doing more narrative stuff, more thought out and planned out stuff, not so much the montage stuff, we'll still do that stuff. But this is gonna give us an opportunity to push us as filmmakers to focus on each shot individually to tell the best story possible. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the description. Um, this has come from months and months of research as far as figuring out the best lenses for us. Um, and there's no such thing as like the best lens ever. You'll notice as you start studying like the world's best cinematographers, they'll never use one lens from project to project. Or they'll rent different lenses based on what project they are doing um, because each lens has a totally different feel for it. The reason why we decided to buy lenses compared to rent them is renting these lenses, especially when we're renting those Leica lenses. We weren't using the Summa Lux lenses, we were using the Summa Chrome lenses, which are the same company, but they're kind of a big step down, the Summa Chrome lenses. And the difference for those is we were spending $1,500 to $3,000 a day renting those lenses. So we're like, for how often we were filming, it doesn't make sense to constantly be renting every day. It made sense to buy them kind of where we're at right now. So any questions you guys have, leave them down below in the description. We would love to hear your guys' thoughts. We have a lot of exciting stuff happening this year and we're excited to share that process with you guys. Um, and if you haven't already, follow us on Instagram. That's where we share kind of what's going down on a day-to-day -day basis. And um, we're just excited for this new year because a lot of big things are happening. Thanks so much for watching, over and out.